Hello and welcome. Uh, we are going to continue with Mortarian this evening. Uh, you can see his paint scheme right now is pretty light. Uh, so what I want to do is fill in a bunch of the stuff that I know is going to be in Warplock Bronze and Lead Belcher. I don't think I'm going to get to any rust today, um, but that should help create a bunch of contrast lines in there. Uh, this should be helpful um, in sort of guiding the rest of the color work that I do, because right now it's so light it's really tough to tell whether there's any visual breaks or anything like that. Uh, I'm also going to take this lower edge of these wings uh, and green it up a little bit. I'm not, obviously that transition needs some help no matter what, uh, but I'm not quite liking it going to this sort of off yellow. So we're going to shift things up a little bit. I think I'm going to start with the wings because um, that has the most potential to be a little crazy. Let me make sure that my mic is actually working. It is. Crank it up a little bit and we'll get down to business. What I'm going to use is play bear flesh. And I'll set this guy aside a bit. It's going to be green. It's going to be a lot green. Um, but what I figure I can do with it is uh, just sort of hit the edge a little bit and then loosen up the contrast paint. Just thin it up with a little bit of water and then I can uh, dust it a bit with Nurgling Green. Should, should make for a nice transition. I do realize my water's in the other room. I'll be right back in one second. prep work and forgot my water so here we go hey <laughs> I'm curious as to when you're going to paint some pink orcs it is October is it not I have golf rocker um, as a model and, and hey thank you that's very nice um, you're like wicked generous and I certainly very much appreciate it every time I see that big green colored thing pop up I uh I get taken aback uh so soon I, I basically I'm planning on Mortarian um sort of needing a break maybe sometime in the middle but I, I basically have a ticking clock I will get to an orc uh and and on your behalf I will order some pink or mix some pink and I'll make sure Goff Rocker is an awesome model I don't know if you've ever checked it out uh, but it's literally due with a microphone he's got like a guitar on his back um but with that recommendation I will make sure uh, water bottle. There will be a pink cork. That's a great idea. I hadn't even thought of pink. It'll look perfect. Tom. He's got like a top hat. He's standing on like a squig amp. It's uh, it's dope. I'm excited. So yes, a uh, very prophetic question and excellent implied suggestion as well. I am a little scared of this step, but we are going to just see how it goes with this green here. I'm excited. I, I love everything that orcs represent. Uh, the fact that they are comedic relief. They're fun. They love to fight. And, uh, and all of that together, I think, is going to make for some really interesting painting. I think you could take a little bit of extra liberty with them. They're just fun. They're super fun. And I think Pink Orcs is going to be pretty sweet. So this isn't too heavily colored, but that's good. And it's going over a bit of yellow, um, which is also good. I need to be careful that I actually smooth this color out a bit. It is funny um, with you get so into Death Guard. I mean, it's my, my first army. It's my first introduction to painting at all. You get into it. It's so serious in a lot of ways, with the exception of Nerglings. Nerglings being the awesome comic relief there. Uh, but I do find myself wanting to, like, actually paint with a bit of color. Um, 
because that sounds fun. I should actually flip this up like that, and then I can just sort of some water wisp this around a little bit, just sort of spread it. It's basically what I did for the cloak. Is I'd get in there with some contrast paint and then just use some water to sort of spread it out. Uh, I think this looks a little bit sickly, which is good. I think I'm going to like it a little bit more than the yellow. Just got to make sure it's a little heavier up by the edge. Took a few days off here and there recently. I, believe it or not, I actually do have plans every once in a while. It does happen. Played some video games online with a couple of buddies of mine last night. Um, but in other very important news, I found, finally found my, my local game shop that I think I'm going to hold court at. They have... Saturday's pretty much open, they said. There's always, at the very least, three or four people in the back locking down some tables with some 40k games uh, that are all happy to teach, which I think is fantastic because I really don't know how to play. Um, so that's coming up soon. I think I'm going to try to get out there this Saturday and play my first game. I've got, I mean, I've got more than, I've got well over 500 points. I'm precariously close to 2000, but I think I'm going to try to start with combat patrol. It seems nice and well, for lack of a better term, controlled. Um, see, see if I can handle a 500 point game and just, I just need to learn, you know, how the phases flow, um, you know, I just need to go through it. I've, I've read the rules, and they're not that bad. And I'm very familiar with extremely complex game rules. But I'm one of those people, learning-wise, that has to kind of get in there and do it before, um, before it all sinks in. So I'm excited. It'll be a, a good step. So, okay, so you can see there, that's now pretty darn green. Um, and I'm, I'm confident that I'll be able to blend this up with some of that dry brushing in there. And it's not one coherent line I'm doing better than I did the first time. So I think that's an improvement. It looks more sickly. I think it's a little bit better color contrast. So, so there we go. I'm going to, you know what, dabbing it seems to be, seems to be the jam. Make sure I got enough in there. I still got a little bit of a line in there, but I don't think that that's that much of a problem. I think it's actually good now that it's a, a blend between what was there before and this new pass. A couple of little more dabs in there, some darker. I don't want it to be super consistent like a flat paint. I want it to be sort of mottled. Mottled. So there's one. And the reason I'm going to go back and forth from this to metallics is that this needs this needs a while to dry and set in and I don't want to rush things so I can like do the wings a bit and then I can dip over do some metallics for a bit those tend to be pretty thick and clunky so they need some time to dry and this contrast paint absolutely like does a good job of getting in the cracks. So in terms of getting it to to spread, getting it anywhere near those cracks, does a nice job of organically just moving the stuff around. I love it. I can't believe I've really used almost no contrast paint correctly up till this model. <laughs> I actually went back and watched one of my old videos the other day and uh, just, they were just different paints. Just different paints. Obviously, my first notorious lesson was with that uh, that super neon green stuff, Tesseract Glow. But I don't know; it's fun. I I don't pride myself on using paint the wrong way, but a lot of the effects that I got out of stuff that I really liked were just like I just happened to do something different. And I do watch painting videos. Like, I don't want to act like I'm just, like, operating completely out in the void. Um, but I don't, like, I don't sit and watch a bunch of painting videos to figure out how I'm going to do it. I mainly just like to look at the techniques that people use 
um, get a little bit of a sense of paint colors. I have a lot more paints than I used to and when I started. I had like very little. And I still don't have one of those like enviable walls of paint. But getting any sense of how something might look before painting it, pretty helpful. Alright, so that's pretty darn green. And this may actually get more than one coat. Certainly possible. But as I dab it in there, it is giving this nice, really, I mean, it is called flake bear flesh. It is giving this nice rotten look to these wings. I had hoped that first color, whatever the heck it was I used on it, was going to look sickly enough. I mean, it was a pretty sickly yellow, but they're sick and then, you know, demon Primark sick. I gotta hold myself to a pretty high standard. So I'm just sort of massaging this a little bit. As I learned from the first time, like if you let it sit somewhere, it will make a line. So just by taking the contrast paint that's already in there and dabbing a bit over it, I'm just giving it multiple passes at how it dries up a bit. All right, that's probably pretty good. I'll leave that guy to sit and close up my plain bare flesh. And get down to proper metal business. And as you may have surmised, I do very much like painting metals. Something about it. And his belt is our gold. There's my lead belcher. Where oh where is my warp lock bronze? My beloved warp lock bronze. Did I not bring it over? Celestra Gray, that's not in the cards. Let me see if I left it over at this other table. Give it a quick check. Right, Edward. That's a four block bronze. I truly don't know why I ever moved this paint. It's a tasty beverage in and of itself. It is getting pretty low. Well, not low, it's just, it is low. It's getting pretty thick. I figure out if I can loosen this stuff up a little bit in the pot. So I don't just have to start over from, from a new one. And I do need to really suss out whether or not there's another brand that makes something close enough to Warp Lock that I can just use that in its stead. Because metallics out the pot, It's kind of weird. Like, now I gotta dip this thing all the way down into the murk. Kind of just want a squeezy bottle. Alright, so keeping with my general MO, the things that get lead belts are gonna be stuff like the gun. Um, though that meshed sort of barrel casing will get bronze. Everything else that is ornate, like all this filigree work on the pauldron. Anything that is going around um, edges of armor and stuff like that, those will all get warp lock bronze. And I gotta figure out whether or not this is the right brush to use because it's it's a little big. I'll find out the hard way. How comfortable I feel. And this is where things do get a little bit scary. Let's scooch this over a little this way. Because now I gotta go right up against stuff that I painted really light. And that's a new feeling. Because I haven't painted many things very light. Almost everything I do is like darkness on darkness on darkness. I kind of want Mortarian to stand out in my army for that reason. Just kind of do a riff on something that works with my army colors. But isn't identical. Isn't just a, a rehashing of the same argument. Alright brush, are you going to be okay? You gonna be okay, buddy? Yeah, a tiny brush is the way to go. Put that in there. I think that's gonna be better. Yeah, I got much smaller. There we go. There we go. And the edges of this I don't have to be too crazy about getting over the edge. 
these pauldrons still haven't gotten a wash. And with that tan leading into Warplock Bronze, that wash will just go right into those edges and, uh, and make them happy. Too thin. Grab a little more glop. There we go. Super gentle with that edge. Just not going super fast, just taking my time. They're not the prettiest edges I've ever done. But a little of that is just me being kind of cowardly. I can always go back and hit them again. They do look kind of janky though. I'm, I'm being I'm being a little too cautious. I know I'm going to say that out loud like I just did and then screw something up because I'm not cautious enough. But that's the way life goes. It's okay to eat your own shoe. Sometimes. Shouldn't try to. Here we go. Here we go. That's looking metally. I do need to tighten my glasses up to keep sliding down the end of my nose. I guess it's good for the old man look. But uh, they're actually transition lenses. Not transitions. Uh, they're bifocals with the, without the line. So I do kind of need to stare down my nose with my glasses in place, but it is what it is. What a model. There's so many extra pieces. I still got to prime and put on this guy. He's a... Uh, this sort of base, you know, full body with the exception of the one, the one arm there. Um, not a lot of pieces. I was very pleasantly surprised. I was figuring a lot more of this would be micro construction building up, but like whole side of the cloak, it's one piece. But he's still got a lot of chains that hang off of him. The little ornate bits that I'm leaving off for now so I can reach everything pretty easily. I will say that this Warplock Bronze for some reason is not really sticking to the primer all that well. Not all that well. It may end up needing two coats. It might. Which will be fine. This is good relaxation. I still have no idea how long this is going to take me to get through. <clears throat> Can't even put an estimate on it. Oh yeah, there's some good tremors. My posture is pretty terrible right now. Step in there again. Just get this edge lit up. Underneath here. Yeah, this this light primer is a it's a thing. By a thing I mean you don't get to hide as much stuff in shadow for free. I was tempted to hit him with black first and then just wipe from like a distance. 
the last couple times I did that, the, the Wraith Bone Primer on top of the black, it came out so thick. It was kind of unintelligible. I figured that was kind of bad. My, it worked well on my tally man because I wanted him to look dusty and crusty, but in general practice, I was really worried that I was going to eat up a bunch of detail on this model if I did that. All right, so those are okay. Let's flip him around to the back here. Yeah, plenty more to do. Plenty. Good job, buddy. You just sit nice and still. Scooch myself a little bit. There we go. I think that's a little bit more settled. Actually set him down a little bit. I get so excited to paint that I, I'll just like contort myself into the worst possible position and then stay in it for a while and then realize later. I really need to move. I just need to be more present minded. It's so engrossing. Just sitting here. Painting these wonderfully evil looking dudes. It's a good exercise in being present minded, knowing when to pause. Move yourself around a little bit. Readjust, even just pausing to recenter yourself can be super helpful while you're painting. You start going down a weird road, things aren't working out, just just breathe a little bit. All right, there we go. There we go. That's looking good. I don't think I'm going to get to his side arm tonight. I'm content to just let that sit for a bit. Basically up to the point that I got to glue it on. There, it's a little thick. Easy, buddy. Just work your way through it. I do hope when I get to my golf rocker model that uh, the shakes work out. It seems like the kind of model that shaky hands would be fine for. He's really fun. Here we go. And on super thin spots like this, I'm I'm really not brushing. I'm just touching the brush to the model and then just, just giving it a little dab and just letting the paint work its way around. Right, that's cool enough. Feel good about that. Here we go, just taking my time with these lines. This part is nice, nicely raised up. So as long as you're slow, you don't flick the brush around, you stay in pretty good shape. Underneath. There we go. Give this bottle a little shake. Without shaking the table. There 
You're just going to sit there, Mortarian. You just chill out, buddy. Just chill out. There we go. Now there's a huge pile of glop sitting on top there. Take a second, sip my Earl Grey out of my branded mug. Ah, that's good stuff. Little demographic fact. Uh, when I was starting this channel up for the first three months, which is basically up to the point where I was at about 100 subs, very American, mostly American Canadian. In the subsequent three months after, my channel uh, is very Ukrainian, very Brazilian, uh, in, at least in terms of my subs, way more so than it is United States folks, which I find absolutely delightful um, for someone who is still is terrified of doing this, like knowing that there's people like on the other side of the world. Watch me paint my dumb models. It's pretty satisfying. It's cool. It's really cool. I picked up a lot in Brazil in the last couple of weeks. It really makes you think, you know? Being able to just plug your computer in, have internet, push video out to the universe. And it's not that anyone can watch it, but a lot of people can. I think it's neat. All right, we will keep rolling in a second. I'm just gonna give my back a rest, my hunched back. I don't know if you can hear my stomach gurgling, but I just plowed through a bunch of wings that my stepson brought home. Hopefully this doesn't turn into a ASMR stomach sounds channel. There we go, more paint. More full, thick paint. All right, it's nice and thinned out on my wet palette. Clear the brush off a little bit. And we'll keep on trucking. This part's a little squirrely because of that big piece that's sticking out there. I just find you just keep turning the model till you find a direction that it's not fighting. You're not fighting against the model to get the brush in and it just kind of works itself out. I have many a time just sort of like ward against a tough to paint spot. And then you find out a minute later when you turn it to do something else that there was just another angle you could have gone in on. And uh, obviously, very obviously, um, for a while I wasn't, I was, I was just putting the entire model together, put the whole thing together and just paint it. And sub assembly is in some cases, definitely the way to go. I do think that there's something fun about putting the whole thing together and just painting it as is. There's like a little bit of a challenge there. That's interesting. I don't think I'm going to be winning any, any painting competition soon. My tolerance for like dabbing and missing a spot. It's okay. I do try my best, but uh, there's a little bit of a ceiling to my best, and that's fine. Makes me happy. But I find that if I don't take it, if I take it seriously, but not too seriously, I land in a really good space with how I feel about the things that I paint. Stay positive. Keep it fun. And keep it moving. All right, I am going to hit his gun now. Um, the spots that I'm going to do are this sort of front grate uh, in this color. And then also, uh, I don't know if you could tell, but it, yeah, I mean, you can tell from that shot. It looks like a revolver. So essentially it's got different separations there. I'll hit those with that. And that way the whole gun won't just be this silver blob. Um, it'll have some darker color to it as well. Thin you out a little bit, buddy. 
see that big glob sitting on that brush just waiting to be a problem set you down gently take a look at this brush I think yeah it just had an extra piece of fuzz on it there we go okay, if I set you down I can plant my picky and I'll do something bright and plasma colored in between these but to get these sort of drums with this drum painted on the, all the edging that'll look cool The hammer's tempting to hit as well, not just because I accidentally hit it. We'll see. I might hit that too. Eh, this is a little exciting. A little precarious in here. It's a tight spot. Oh yeah, I did definitely... Ooh, gentle. Definitely hit a spot I didn't mean to there. I'll see if I can fix that. I might be able to scooch a little bit of water on a Q-tip in there. Without breaking the thing. That's the key question. Can I do it without breaking? Yeah, I nailed it. Good job. Keep calm, carry on. There we go. Let's get that. You can already see, you know, obviously there's tons of work to do related to this metal work. But you can already see, like now it's got some dark lines in there. You can start to better envision how you want different colors to work because you've got things breaking up all that light, light section. Yeah, I was just basically getting, I don't want to say snow blind, but the model's so light that I was like, uh, is this even going to be interesting here? Uh, what I'll do also tonight is hit all these chains. That'll help bring that out, all these hoses. Um, it just makes it easier to see the progress you're making and how, like sometimes the next, next step you should take with your model is one that teaches you the most about where it might be going. There we go. Oh, that was a slick move. Good job, buddy. Good job, me. This is an absolutely beautiful gun. Absolutely beautiful. A work of art. I can see why in the books everyone speaks so highly of it because it's absolutely gorgeous. Thankfully, it grew to the size of Mortarian after it became a demon. Alrighty. Alrighty. Let's see, getting around this little... I guess that's a sight. I guess that's a chaos sight. Oof. Yeah, it's not as clean as it could have been, but it's on the underside. We're fine. We're good. We're cool. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, this is fun. This is a fun gun. Yeah, and what a project. What a delightful, delightful project. Being super careful around there, to give it a look around. This is one of those moments where you really have to look at this thing from like 8 million angles. Oh, the other demographic interesting thing is that my channel has pivoted 
very heavily, much older, much older. When I started the first month or two, it was all pretty much exactly my demographic. It was American white dudes age 40 to 50. And now, also awesome, I trend older. In fact, I think my biggest recorded demographic, and this is purely based off of like what you share with YouTube, it's actually 65 and up. Which I also think is neat. I don't know. Maybe people just like having my rambling on in the background. Who, who would have thunk it? Don't actually know, but uh, certainly fun, curious stuff to to ponder. Ugh, too much paint all over that guy. There we go. Glop a little bit of a dab of water in there to thin it out. Okay. Now we're just going to go all the way around this edge. Just keep it nice and slow and steady. Nice and slow and steady. Right, that part's going to be lead belcher. Stay away from it. All the way right up to it. Just hit this edge. Oh, shaky hands. You can do it, buddy. You can do it, shaky hands, McGee. There we go. Whew. All right. Getting some metal in there, looking good. Don't want to hit the glove, but just want to get this whole edge. Yeah, that works. That works. Don't want to hit this whole elbow though, so I think I'm I think I'm clear there. I do need to hit this Nurgle symbol on the pauldron. Outer edge of that will all get a good dosage, and this is raised up nicely, so this this feels very clean to paint. Very clean. That's good. Do need to get oop, a little drop on the end. Uh, yeah, this is, this part's fun. I did just get to the point in, uh, in the Magnus book where he just went and tried to talk to the emperor. And I think it's three different books now that I've read, which means that I think it's exceedingly intentional that the entirety of the conversation that the author actually lets you see is just the emperor saying Magnus, Magnus saying father. And they don't give you any of the rest of the conversation. You get some context around it. Like Magnus absolutely knows that he like broke the great work. Like he knows that. But I'm not entirely certain with how psychic he and his dad are if there's any words other than Magnus father even said. Might not have needed them. But I was kind of expecting that this would be the book that like went into a little bit more depth. But I also kind of respect the authors and Games Workshop like self-control and saying this is this is what the conversation is. This is the entirety of it in terms of what is deliberately written out. I think that's kind of cool. There's a lot of stuff like that. Like whoever at Games Workshop sort of is the ultimate decider of information leaking. I can't say leaking because it's, it's a book. Um, but they clearly decide things ahead of time of what's in play and what's not in terms of what the books directly communicate and what's implied. And I find that whole process to be very interesting because there's 
it seems to me like three whole books in the exchange is always just the same two words back and forth. Like they're very, obviously they're very protective of their IP, but like how they choose to do storytelling, pretty interesting. The implication that even what you read in the books isn't necessarily accurate. I think that part is like super meta crazy. Like the Horus heresy being told from, at least in the early books, because I, mean, I haven't, still like, in, I think this is book six maybe? I don't know, somewhere in that range. At least for like the first several books, the implication is that the remembrancers are part of how the story gets told but tons of them die um, and it's not from one of their perspectives directly um, so you get a lot of I don't know if you can call into question a lot of what you learn it's it's treated they're treated as mythology rather than uh, like direct correspondence from the horse's mouth. They're treated like, it's almost like you're supposed to read them with the same sense, and apologies to anyone who's ultra religious watching this, but like in the same way they say, hey, if you're reading the Bible, like you have to sort of keep the context of the time period in mind and who wrote it and you know how that needed to be translated eight grillion times. Um, and that, you know, what actually happened doesn't speak to the truth or non-truth of it. It's just that, like, expecting this to be a first-hand account is, is a little bit of a high expectation. I think that's neat. I think they intel intelligently and intentionally treat it that way. And I think some of that gives them the narrative license to sort of take a pass on being perfect on everything, which is fine. That's cool. I, I recognize it's a zillion books and a lot of the core mythology came out of like snippets from rule books. So that's fair. Like you got to do what you got to do. But as a device, it's also kind of neat. But uh, I never knew until I got to this point in the book just how much Magnus understood what he did. He gets home and he is like angry and depressed and realizes that like, so he knows at this point that he was part of the grand plan. The thing that I think is totally unfair, I'm not saying that Magnus didn't do anything wrong because I think he did do some stuff wrong, but when he realizes how he screwed up and he realizes that he was a part of the emperor's grand plan and that one day Magnus would be sitting on that throne doing his thing. He gets pretty sad. Like, I do think the emperor probably, oh, I don't know, should have clued Magnus in considering that Magnus would have had to have probably a lot more psycher training to be able to do that and sort of genetically breeding him to be a psyker like his dad and potentially like only second to his dad amongst human derived folk and then be like oh we can't have psychers hanging out in the legions anymore <laughs> it's just kind of a ridiculous expectation it's like if I was a pizza restaurant owner and I raised my kid from like the age of three to be able to make dough to operate an oven to make a killer sauce and then my master plan was to have my kid take over my restaurant and then somehow I let the circumstances happen where the kid messing up the whole plan is because he makes pizzas it's like Ugh. it's just it's not fair Scooch my camera a little bit too. New camera, who dis? I think it needs to be aimed down a smidge. Ah, whatever. I think it auto focuses. It does. Ha! Huh? Neat.
<clears throat> yeah, that's the sound of a dry throat. So anyway, if you are one of the folks that watches these streams after the fact, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. It makes my day. Throughout the day, in fact. Because you're like, man, eh, people are just checking out this stream. Even when it's not live. All right. So this spike and the bits around it, those will get warp lock bronze as well. Get a dab of water here. Get things loose. Some more paint. I am excited. If all things work out, I will play my first game on Saturday. My first game of Warhammer ever. Printers printing things out. I got to spend some time rereading the rules. Everyone at this game shop was super nice. I'm excited to finally learn to play it. And I think it's absolutely wonderful that to play the game, you show up with your models that you painted. If that's your thing, if it's not, it's not. And that's cool too. It's a fun game. Or so I believe. I don't actually know if I'll enjoy it, but I have a pretty good feeling I will. Um, but for me, at least, like showing up with all these models that I've spent like hours and hours and hours. So many hours painting these little guys. And at times I sort of, because I've never played the game before, that purpose hasn't been really front of mind. But now that I know I'm going, ooh, it's pretty cool. That every piece that I put on that board is going to be something that I have literally spent hours with. Lovingly painting away. What an interesting dynamic. There we go. Get this whole ring. And then the parts that come off of it that are spitting out that sort of wispy, gaseous stuff, that'll be, that part will get lead belcher in a little, a few minutes. This model does look pretty messy right now. It's not, but it looks that way. I don't think I'm just making excuses. In a, anytime you use white as a base and then go over it with darker colors at any spot, it's the opposite of priming the thing in black. Any spot that doesn't get a touch of paint just like screams white. Because uh, it is white. But it really does stand out. So this spot's a little precarious. I gotta be kind of careful with it. It's spiky. A little complicated to get the brush in some spots, but definitely it's gonna pay out. This is a weird like microphone on top of this thing. It's like a motorcycle engine. <laughs> weird dude. I love this guy. Ayatollah of rock and roller. There we go. But yeah, this model is absolutely in the face where I'm like, it looks pretty terrible. It's not one of my plague marines, so I'm not trying to build drama. But I'm not actually 100% sure that where I'm going with this is even going to look good in the end. A lot of Death Guard stuff that takes a while. A lot of different paint steps before it starts looking even remotely sane. And all models are kind of like that unless you literally just, you know, prime them and, and dunk them immediately. But uh, this guy, man, this guy looks weird. <laughs> he does not look like... He does not look like... He does not make sense yet. Absolutely does not make sense yet. 
Oh, what? Tim. Tim. A scholar and a gentleman and an amazing friend. And I love you dearly. And that was totally unnecessary, but now you made me feel awkward and that's great. I mean, you say that. It will look good. It will look good. Step by step. But uh, right now I'm just in the, uh, you know, the horrifying phase where huge whole sections of it don't have paint yet. <laughs> it looks pretty awkward. But then again, my big old night tyrant went through that phase. But this paint scheme, no idea if it's going to actually work. I don't know if it's going to come together. I believe in you. You know what, Tim? I trust you to believe in me more than I trust me to believe in me. So I'm just going to go with whatever you say because you're one of the most trustworthy people I know. All right. Well, that is probably enough of that ultra dark warp block bronze. I'm going to switch over to the lead belcher and get some of these chains going. Boop. Can you sit like that, Morty? I think this is the weirdest thing ever that I'm like out here painting models on the internet and my buddy Tim shows up. I think it's awesome, but it's like what a tiny world, what a tiny, tiny world. And also Tim, your first super on a live stream. What a moment. What a moment. Alrighty. Tiny world, tiny figures. You got it, buddy. Tim, I'm gonna go play this game this weekend. How crazy is that? All of this painting. I'm actually gonna put these dudes on a board and have them shoot at other little tiny things that someone else spent inordinate amounts of time painting. I can't wait. Makes the days of just playing Blood Bowl at work seem so simple. So pristine. I got a dope case. Yeah, exactly. Get the measuring tape out. There's all sorts of like I mean, obviously there's always like a local meta and whatever, like around who plays what faction and all this other stuff. But like, I wonder if it's weird to like show up like a construction dude style, like mega Stanley tape measure, or if you're supposed to carry something more dainty. I'm just looking forward to like learning the local norms of like, like I have no idea in terms of etiquette. Like the only thing that I know is like, you really shouldn't touch other people's models, but that's like, kindergarten like don't touch other people's stuff without their permission like that's no big deal but i know like i can't wait to see that just do a faux pas because i'm like i got no history with it but yeah i'm super excited it's like an extra bonus treat as a complete game nerd to pick up the hobby of painting and then be able to take these mofos out there and be like i'm gonna beat you up with these things that I just spent the last several months painting. It's really like an amazing payoff. I think this brush is too tiny for this work and I'm probably damaging it. It's going over a bunch of chain mail. So I'm gonna give that little guy a break. More than earned it. I'll go with a super mega brush. Oh yeah, this this will make quick dangerous work. Danger painting. That brush is that's a big brush. But if I'm slow and steady, everything will be fine, right? Right. Yeah, that works. That works. 
the brush stays decently wet and where it gets kind of clumpy you just go back over it and smush it around a bit yeah he's kind of pretty I, think I need to make the cloak a little bit darker but I'm learning the patience of like you can go over it two times if you feel like it I'm no longer clumping everything on so heavily in the first pass, thank God. Though I do war against multiple, multiple passes still. All right, that looks reasonably chainy. Make sure none of it clumps up too much. Don't want to fill that stuff in and lose the texture. So. Soon, but not too soon. Um, I have dry brushed this a bit in a couple spots, but it was like way too early. Underneath this cloak stuff, I dry brushed it first with, <laughs> so silly. Um, like I started in, I mean, what is essentially that white color that's right there? And I dry brushed it with a whiter white, because that's how you do. Um, just so that, I mean, you can see where it's like dark in some spots where it's recessed. This contrast paint like gets in those gullies and gets thick. So I, I, I used a white or white to dry brush it first, put the contrast over it. Then at some point near the end, I'll dry brush again. And I generally will do that with a slightly different rather than just a lighter color. Because it, I don't know, because I saw someone do it once and it looked really cool. I don't want to act like I have a very good explanation for why, but like... You just get a lot of extra neat, fine detail in by, say, like, with this wing, I'm probably going to dry brush it with this, like, gnarly looking nurgling green. Because it'll, like, contrast with that red a bit, and it'll also help blend in that color. Basically, my, my painting schemes are just a system of half-baked theories that sometimes work out. Um... And sometimes I validate them a little bit, but they're they're mostly half baked. The things that I feel like make sense, or that I did three times and didn't hate it three times, it's like saying Candyman or Beetlejuice. It's like, well, if it worked three times, it's good for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's art, man. Um, well said. Um, like I am much to the probably. Uh, not much evidenced by this channel, but I'm actually a pretty decent photographer. Um, and I draw decent diagrams, like, but I'm like a whiteboard jockey, like all the genetics that went into like for painting and stuff, uh, kind of went to my sister from my dad. My dad's a great painter. My sister's like studio artist. Um, or at the very least I've never attached to it. So the idea of having a brush in my hand that isn't for painting walls is like pretty foreign. I never really went through that kind of art process of just trying crap out and going for it. So maybe, I don't know, genetically is probably a bad explanation. It probably is in my genes somewhere. I just never flexed on it. Like I cared about music creatively, but most of the drawing painting stuff, um, I did very utilitarian things. Like I can, I can draw lighting pretty well. Strangely enough, I cannot get lighting. I don't even know how to think about lighting on a model, but like on a 2D drawing, I can handle it just fine. Got a little wiggle to him. Something inside you's not settled right, buddy. But yeah, it's. Well said, Tim. That's art, man. You just like funny because I don't want to use any metaphors with actual people in them because I make it think that I actually think I'm an artist. I'm like, well, well, Jackson Pollock, blah blah blah. It's like easy, easy there, buddy. But no, it's uh, I think that's the part that I do like about it. Very experimental, but most of the artistic things I do, like I've made soap, and that's fun. But that's like a chemical process and. It's not like I was like drawing pretty symbols on it or anything like that. Most of the most of the artsy stuff I do is very utilitarian, and this is just like purely dope aesthetic. 
and I think it it feels a little more comfortable for me to do because the model's already done. I mean, you have to put it together, and I do a pretty mediocre job of that. But once it's together, it's like, all I gotta do is paint it? Sure, that sounds fun. Not, not a lot of stigma with it in my head. Everyone's obviously got their own, their own stuff that they're sorting out. But for me, like this is, this is perfect. Like Mortarian looked cool before I even got to him. And I have no worries about screwing him up. Um, not based on my skill, but because like, man, you gotta look cool. Like if I just painted him, spray painted him pink, he'd still look dope. Might look doper. I just have no fear of trying fun crap. And I have to tell you, this is like, I am, I thought this was going to be a neat hobby. I am so sold on this crap. I'm like, oh, I'm nearly at my 2000 point army. What's next? Like, oh, I'm addicted. Happy midlife crisis. There we go. I'm just out here to please Nurgle. That's about it. Papa Nurgle's happy. I'm happy. Uh, that's a little heavy there, buddy. I feel weird like I'm supposed to take my shirt off whenever I get a super from someone. It's so, it's so weird. <laughs> oh, awkward. Oh, people are so nice. It's also, I, I love the awkwardness also because like I'm not, I'm not playing a video game. I'm doing this like amazingly slow, mundane, just talking through painting. Like, there's no way I can turn up the heat. I mean, I could, but, like, there's no interesting way. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, who wants to see me break this model? Bah! It's like, nope, it's still just going to be monotone old me. Shaky hands McGee. Painting Mortarian. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> uh, I love it. I will say this, it is way more fun doing this with the occasional person stopping by, pure Bob Ross effect. I, to even be used in, in the same sentence is an honor. Um, but yeah, like, I, my aspiration is to be like, back in the day, I could go down to my local TV affiliate and they would have to give people public access time and I could sign up and I could do my little painting show for a half hour a week and someone would donate a little time to maybe edit some stuff together and, and that'd be cool and, you know, maybe a few hundred people would see it. That's like, I don't think that that's a bad aspiration and that's kind of where I'm at now except it's like 6,000 subscribers. But like, clearly, it's not like everyone's tuning in and watching me paint models every night. I think the most people I've had in a stream at the same time was like five. Um, but that's cool. Like people go back and watch them later. People watch my other crap. But as far as like, I paint some happy boils. It does feel like that though. It, it genuinely, giving praise to Papa Nurgle through painting absolutely makes me happy it's like my inner 12 year old is just in bliss like painting little boils on things is cool it never wasn't cool and uh and i'm happy to do it it's wicked cool like it's <laughs> it's so neat some of the things I paint are so absolutely gross. Um, 
it just it tickles me pink. It tickles me Nurgle's rot of colors um, to be able to do it. And I will say this, these models are absolutely amazing. Even when I'm frustrated building them because like two pieces don't want to go together the right way. Nine times out of 10, that's my fault. But like the one time out of 10, it's absolutely the manufacturing's fault. Um, but like just putting these gross things together and you see all these little details. Like every last one of these plague Marines has like a special little thing about him. He's either got like a mouth coming out of his guts He's got fungus coming out of his head. One of them's just got a crazy boil on the side. So he's this dude with like bug eyes over here. Every one of them's like bespoke special. I like struggled painting the two ultramarines that, no, I only struggled with one ultramarine. Um, just because the, the lines were so clean. Everything was so clean on it. Like, like it's really easy to make the blue paint look like paintbrush strokes if you didn't get the texture right. Whereas like, a plague marine it's just like it looks like i don't know his armor's ten thousand years old and it's been sitting in the warp that whole time and someone threw up on it this morning and you're like you to rock on the second the second uh ultramarine that i did though i had no problem with him because i only painted him put his head in typhus's hand and his body on the base with maggots coming out of it yeah that's what happens you give me two clean looking models and i turn one of them into all praise Papa Nurgle and Typhus is Harold. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, what a waste of a person to be good, good model. Sacrificed him to Nurgle. Because I'm that mature. Love it. All right, this is coming together. That's going to need some Warplock bronze on it. But these chains, I mean, they're somewhat dry, even though... I'm sort of betrayed by the <laughs> metal paint on my fingers because I'm a toddler. Um, yeah, things are coming together. Lots of metal. Obviously, I'm going to like tamp down the shininess of the metal uh, with just a black wash. And that'll just look like it's been like leaking oil. It'll look like a car engine that's been like, you know, an old Chevy engine that's been never washed, never sprayed out for like 20 years. It'll look like that. Trust me. I'll add some rust to it because corrosion's cool. Alrighty. Lots of little details. I've made my piece of the fact that like every time I touch this model and I flip it over, I find something that in a step I was supposed to do before I haven't. Like this piece that's white, I didn't even glue it on the first time. I like just missed that step. But now he's on there. I got to hit him with that same purple. Um, notoriously, I know there's spots with chain on this model, but I just won't hit in this pass. I just won't see him. I just get model blind. That's okay. It takes me a lot of passes. Some stuff I don't get back to in good time. That's okay. Because they're mine and they're sweet all kinds of models in my setup over here I have to get them based by this weekend because I'm not taking them out on the town with naked bases because I have principles this is not savagery uh, where was I starting with this is that even supposed to be metallic oh it is now it is now you'll be metallic sure and then the rest of that I'll hit with bronze on the bottom. Yeah, that'll make sense. There are parts of this that I... It doesn't happen as much on a model like Mortarian because it's big. Those Plague Marines, I just find details like weeks after I'm done painting the thing that I just didn't see because of these darn old eyes. I'm like, oh man, there's like two maggots sticking out of that shoe and I just painted over them brown. I just didn't see them. Everything's so tiny. It boggles the mind how people you see on Instagram, people just post like absolutely crazy pictures of these super tiny models. And I'm like, one, I'm not sure if I was in person, I could see that detail. It's not a problem. I, I, that's not a criticism. 
it's more like I can't see so well. Um, but two, like how do you like people like freehand draw script that is like I mean legit like words that are like a millimeter high with a brush. Don't get it. Don't know how they do it. <clears throat> it's insane. It's very inspirational. But it's like inspirational in the way that you're like, wow, that was awesome how you ran that marathon. I am never doing that. Like that is outside of my my lane. Not in a bad way. It's like no interest in running a marathon. I'm happy to cheer for you. Before I make my gross stuff. All right, now might be the time. Oh, I got a lot of, I was going to say maybe I'm done with lead belcher, but of course not. Even in just saying you're almost done with a step, you basically summon the rest of it to happen. The gun. The gun. Make sure this thing's not totally glopped. There we go. All right, and I don't want to undo all that work I did previously. So I'm going to be somewhat careful. I may only go up to a certain point and then grab a tinier brush. Because that's smart. What a business model this is. Like, just about everyone that plays this faction that is, like, trying to be a serious contender, plays in tournaments, like, they may not play with Mortarian in their army every single time. The meta could change. They all own him. Painted. Like, it's not a cheap model. <laughs> like, if you, like this faction enough to play it with any level of seriousness and frankly i've seen tons of people with this model who are just like man i just play to put this model on the table think about that value of a customer if you get someone hooked on warhammer i'm absolutely proof of that like you're good to go games workshop you win this one not a whole heck of a lot I could do about it. And I know plenty of people were like, well, then I switched over to this game or that game. And I don't know that I will do that. I think I started too late. I think people that switch out of Warhammer like started 20 years ago. I started six months ago. I have not tired of the lore of the, of the single faction models that I've... Oh, yeah, I'm branching out. Um, I ain't tired at all. I'm just getting started. Oh, good metal gun. And I'm skipping those little things in the tumblers because those are going to be like super, super bright plasma looking stuff. And that over white will be nice. Those will be blazing. <sighs> Touch the finger. I do think part of the reason I'm so slow is I'll often use a brush that's super, super tiny. I'm scared of being clumsy. And then it takes me forever. And the surprise is, it's still clumsy. Even with a little brush, you could be clumsy. A little bit of damage control you get out of it, but not a whole heck of a lot. A whiff is still a whiff. There we go. Did I hit that? No, I stayed clear. Good job. Safety first. Get in that crease. There we go. Yep, looking good. All right, what else to hit? I did get that microscopic amount of chain mail in there. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Could have just left that be cloth. But no. All right, that tube's good. Oh, I got this entire... I don't even know what this device is supposed to be. Perfection is the enemy of progress. Embrace the mistakes. I do. 
I do that. Um, yeah, that's that's a very good way of putting it. I um, I have taken this entire sort of project that I've turned it into, entire midlife crisis hobby, and from the start, like I've just embraced it as like I'm gonna sound like a complete weird hippie, but like I knew. I was just going to be unleashing my inner 12 year old. I'm just doing it for the joy of it. Like, and I'm enforcing that with myself. Like I laugh at the mistakes that I make and I certainly don't feel bad about any of them. Like, but that doesn't relieve me from like the nervous anticipation of trying something weird that I don't know is going to work. Um, but like, I'm absolutely not going for perfection, but I can see the progress. Um, and when I started, I was just, I was literally recording what I was painting because I wanted to be able to go back and look at it while I wasn't like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, how do I do this? And just be able to watch yourself work. It's like listening to yourself when you, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to play this guitar riff. When you listen to yourself, as long as you're not like too freaked out about it, like you can pick out stuff and yes, obviously with like music, you sit there and you listen to yourself play and you're like, I should die. Um, at least I, like people do that, myself included. Um, but I was just recording it so that I could go back and check my own notes and be like, what color did I even paint this guy? But, you know, proofs in the pudding. That's my first model. Still haven't named him. This is a bad example because it's a work in progress, but, uh, <laughs> It's like, that's my first model, and this is this other piece of crap. Um, but, like, yeah, this is unfair comparison. But, like, how it started, how it's going. Yeah. And I made plenty of mistakes on that, too, and they're dope mistakes. I make good mistakes. I make my mistakes look neat. yeah like a ton of what's going into this model which someday will come to fruition is based off of the mistakes that i made i wouldn't take those things back for nothing i can't tell what's metal and flesh that's how death guard work <laughs> uh, you guys are so weird is that a plug i don't know I am pleasantly confused by every Death Guard model in some way. I'm not even sure what this is supposed to be. I go back and see pictures of stuff. I'm like, oh man, that is so dope. I didn't realize that was that was something cool. Man, this thing is so personal. So personal. <laughs> It's funny that that Night Tyrant and Mortarian combined is like half of a 2000 point army. Wee! It accelerated the, the process quite a bit. I'm glad I painted that big boy. Man, he was fun. I think it was like 15 hours of footage of me going like, what the hell am I doing? But I knew that guy was going to be cool. No matter what. And he's big enough where like if I, if I genuinely screwed something up that I didn't like, I was like, I'll just paint over it. Like four times. He's like, with a tiny model, you can't really do that because eventually they just like look like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man from all the coats of paint. But the dude that big, I was like, Psh, I'll try whatever. Don't like it tomorrow? Paint over it. I'll do it again. Turns out I liked a lot of it. The gun took a while though. The gun, I had to try a lot of different things with. I painted the the plasma-ish gun, I think four times, but I was trying just wild stuff. I'll let you sit and dry for a second. I'll just pull it. Oh, I'll just snap this model. Oh no, it's all on magnets. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah, getting this thing shiny. It's still not where I want it, but like I used a weird, uh, like Keller, Keller shift. Weird, uh, I was going to say vermouth. It's not vermouth. It's a uh, veneer. No, not veneer. Lacquer, I think it was. 
Um, that kind of worked and it's got some shine on the inside there, but it like didn't show enough and I painted some yellow on it and then I put some more of the stuff over it. It's got a bit of a shine to it and it's got a little bit of dry brushing around to make it kind of look like it's glowing. But I just kept going. I, every, every night I went back to this thing and like did a new coat or something on it and now I'm pleased with it. But, uh, oh, magnets. Those magnets. But with a model that big, you're just like, well, just try again, try again. I have some dope extra things for that model coming in the mail. I think they could see come in from England. A bunch of like big old pieces that make it look like the guns are shooting. I'm pretty sure I still got to paint them. Um, which is like big explosive blast, big thing of plasma coming out of them. I can't wait to stack those on there. All right. Time to spin this guy around and see what I haven't hit. I think that's going to get bronze. This I haven't hit back here. Found you. Oh my god, that's a lot of paint sitting on that brush. i got to loosen that up. Ooh, like a Q-tip. There we go. Safe again. Yeah, this brush is a little bit big to get in here. Big old meat hands. There we go. Have a sip of tea. Out of my branded mug. <sighs> my, <clears throat> my wife is finally accepting the fact that I'm not only an amazing husband and father, but also a Global lifestyle brand, mug salesman, entrepreneur. I uh, I can't get YouTube to show my stuff, but uh, I also haven't put like practically any time into it. But their their interface for getting your stuff to actually show up on your channel, I can just like share a link to my store, but I'm too lazy to do that. But I have a mug getting shipped to my buddy in uh, Brazil. I was like, I wonder, I wonder if the shipping to Brazil works. So like, give me your address. You can like, you can let me know if this thing is intact by the time it gets down. I do have merch, Tim. Tim, I'm a global lifestyle brand. That's how serious I take this. Honestly, like as soon as this channel flipped over to like being able to be monetized, it does not make a lot of money. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted to turn everything on. Like, I still haven't turned on, because uh, I can't think of what someone would possibly, like, the bridge too far is someone subscribing. I don't even know what you would subscribe for. Um, so I'm probably not going to do that, because uh, I'm not, I'm not going to, like, withhold weird content. From, it's just silly. Um, it's not silly for other people that have content. I just don't. I think people are just like, hey, let me watch this old man try to learn how to paint crap. Um, but having a store was like, oh, I'm going to turn that on, figure out how that works. I have to, uh, at 10,000 subscribers. So I'm near like 4,000 now I could do charity streams and that's something I want to do. Cause like, I have no plans of quitting my job and becoming a professional person that makes 50 cents a day except for days when like tim shows up and that other guy water bottle showed up and that's a lot of money still can't it's not quitting my job money but it's make me embarrassed live money um which is pretty good money um but like just from advertising i make about 50 cents a day which is like amazing to me um it's insane just from doing this crap all right, I'm going to set you aside for a minute. Mortarian's body. I'm going to switch back to Mortarian's wangs. Do some dry brushing. Yeah, I got, I got baby onesies. Some of them say some funny stuff on them, too. I think one of them says, born to paint minis. It's brilliant. Stuff just... Yeah, so basically I have a store running so that I can make funny stuff for myself. <laughs> Just ship it to myself. 
Uh, what happens when you give someone a little bit of power? Ooh, this stuff looks gross. I love it. I love it. Is this a dry brush? Are you a dry brush? You don't seem like a dry brush. This is too colorful. I need to get a different one of these guys. This guy is not going to help me figure out what things look like. All right. Question is, do I mess up a perfectly good makeup brush for this? I bought makeup brushes. My endless quest to try new stuff. These things weren't even expensive. I know it's going to wreck them, but I don't care. It's neat. I think these would be really good for pigment dust. I don't think they're going to work really well for paint. But I don't care. We're gonna find out because science is cool. All right, and it's just a piece of uh, art board. Is that what they call it? Craft board. Do a dip of this in here. The thing is, makeup brushes. And I have watched a few makeup tutorials. Might be the way to go because they come in a wider variety of shapes. Even getting on there. I need more in the bristles. Go get in there deep, buddy. Okay. I can see it. It's not heavy, but it's getting in there. You know what? Boop. I saw someone do that once. I know it sounds terrible because I'm dry brushing, but they're like, you do need to dip the brush into water so it'll actually keep some of that stuff going. Oh yeah, it's... <laughs> oh yeah, that works. Now we're dry brushing. Now you look sickly, Mortarian. We get the job done. Can you like my motivational you the positive voice inside of me I appreciate it. you remind me who I am I am here yeah that helps you sort of see that like it helps bring this sort of like green up into there a little bit get a little bit of a fade going my sloppy dry brushing technique yeah, we're going really well on blending those colors. Where have you been? It is working. I'm just being patient with it. It also like makes the end of those veiny things look just like gnarly. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Look at how blendy you look. That looks miserable. Like it goes from from like this really just like bloodshot looking, very sad, veiny looking thing to this like, oh, and now it's like gangrenous on the other side. Oh. It's delightful. And this brush is sweet. Yeah, now, now I laid it on there thick. Uh, we've reached the part of the evening where I get excited and start making mistakes because I'm so psyched about how something looks. It's not the worst part of the evening by any stretch. Okay, so we are blending a lot better now. And even as it gets up to that red, it's it's still pretty nice. It's a good blend. Oh yeah, you look gross. You did it, crew. You made his wings look miserable. That is I am pleased. 
They look like they flake off. Just gross. All right, well, makeup brushes, and they're cheap. Cheap makeup brushes. Solid purchase. Blend on up into that stuff. Oh yeah, Mortarian, you you don't you don't look healthy. Good and mixed. It does also knock down that very that plague bear green. Is intentionally a little bit yellow. It's green, but it's got a little baby barf yellow going to it too. And this sort of takes it back to something a little less glossy looking, a little bit more like a moth wing. Let's scooch around there. Look at that, that's happy stuff. That is happy illness. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that means it's working, right? I suppose that means it's working. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, you shouldn't have. All right, I genuinely thoroughly approve of that mix now. I'll just get a little bit more in here. They're a little heavy handed. First, now, there's the backside. All right. Can I just get away with going over just with this? I think I can. I'll cut corners a little bit. Make sure that's thoroughly worked into that brush. It's heavily worked in there now. But I'm essentially doing more than dry brushing right now. We're like stippling. And my kids are going to get a load of this thing. My wife's going to look at this and be like, what? Oh, Morty. You are ready for the vomit prom. So it's, it's not really powdery, but... So it's still wet. I think the best way to show this off will be like, I'll stick a Q-tip in it. Um, actually, is that? That's, you can sort of see it, it's thick. Oh yeah, new camera works. It auto focuses a little bit horribly. So you can see I can dab this Q-tip in there and it's, it's wet enough. Um, so it's not just a pigment powder, but it's definitely thicker so that when you you can't really easily submerge. It's like toothpaste thickness. So you can't submerge the brush in it like you could a normal paint. It won't, like it won't drip. There's no drip. Um, which is good because then you're just dabbing very little at a time and it's thicker. So like, I don't know if it helps it with like evaporation or anything, but it's definitely down with the, the thickness. Heck was I? I was there. And it's a beautiful color. Like it's 
this uh, Nurgling Green. Very nice. It's like mint without all the joy in it. There's no happy brightness to it. It's like all that color saturation was just drawn out of it. It's good stuff. So the thing I read about wetting the brush down, which seemed very counterintuitive the first time I did it, is just, and then you dry the thing off, that you just get the bristles damp enough where, because um, the end will dry out when you like do this whole little thing, but it keeps some amount of paint at the base of the brush, which is dangerous. You wouldn't do that with a normal paint brush. I mean, you shouldn't do that. I do it all the time, and that's why I wreck my brushes. But when you get paint down by the base there, that's actually what makes the brush fray eventually. Because you have so much stuff between the bristles that they go, ah! Um, but after I'm done with this, I'll just dunk it. Um, but that keeps it so that that little bit of wetness on there keeps it so that the paint keeps moving. You've got more than just what's on the tip. Um, I don't know. It seems to be helpful. And I dig it. Yeah, dude, you are looking dynamite and prom ready. It's actually pretty important that it was yellowy underneath this. Because as I get away from the yellow, get a little bit more of a fade, there's still kind of a sad line there, but I'm just going to live with it. I think it's fine. That's a good, happy transition. As far as wings go, Getting close. I need to go a little further in on this wing than I have so far. I can stand to go all the way up to that point. So I'm gonna. There we go. Take a brush into the drink with you. Yeah, now these have an absolutely, like, disgusting sort of pallor. The line that was super hard before is now broken up, which is good. It's still there. I still wanted, like, the last half centimeter to like, kind of be, like, a little bit of a line going around it. But now it's just, it's not paint by numbers. Um, yeah. You guys can sit aside for a minute and contemplate life. I will peek at this guy and figure out. I think I had some more warp lock to do. Could add. Yeah, that'll be fun. Let's let's do something different. Because I bore easy. I think my last step will be just adding some more some more blue to darken that blue up a little bit. And this is uh Drakenhoff Nightshade. Which is exactly what I used the first time, but I was going over white. I was terrified. And I wanted it to fade, which it has faded, but I want the top to be a little bit darker, so doing a second pass with it will be very telling and hopefully a decent amount of fun. Yeah, that guy's going to have to sit in the drink. You normally shouldn't leave your brushes just face down in the water. But it's a makeup brush. And it's floofy. And it doesn't abide by the same laws as a paintbrush. And if I say enough words, then it becomes okay. Alrighty. Check the time real quick. Oh yeah, we're still good. Alright, so. More blue. That's definitely happening. I think 
I should probably base coat Mortarian's face so that that'll be out of the way for the next time. That sounds like a pretty sound plan. All right, go team. Yep, I'll do that first. He's going to get Play Bear Flesh, which would be a nice reference back. There's pretty wings. I'll sort of carry the green elsewhere on the model. I'm just going to hit his whole face with it. This will take more than one coat. This is a contrast paint, so it's going to work its way into all the recesses, and it'll look light in the first pass. It will be light in the first pass. But it'll give him that wonderful, easy breezy cover girl dying green face thing. Um, and it's a starting point. And then before I'm done tonight, I'll probably just hit him with another dab of it. But that is just getting stuff out of the way. Stuff there. I need a slightly thicker brush for this business. I think. Is this one even safe? Eh, it's a base brush. Whatever. We'll find out. I'm going to put this on my wet palette because I don't know how much I'm going to water it down. I did last time is I watered it down maybe too much, but you can go through several passes and just thin it with water. And then the pigment is spread out more. It drips like crazy. So you don't want to like, just because you're watering it down, you don't want to use a pile of it. But it gives you a little bit more control. So I have a heftily watered down version on my palette, and now I can start from the top because I do want it to be darker on top. Start with the darker stuff, and then as I work my way down, just increasingly, increasingly work with a watered down uh, version of the same paint. So maybe like just past his shoulders is where I'll go with the dark stuff that back here thankfully it does it will drip a little bit which is fine um, it's actually good for it to drip a little bit that's what gets it into the crevasses it's the looseness of the paint and the I think it's the viscosity of it where it's not like a standard acrylic it just, it's like thicker than a wash, but thinner than a straight up acrylic base paint. So it finds its way into all those cracks and stays away from uh, sharp edges. Okay, so now I'll move back to something a little lighter and now I'm just sort of splotching it on there and letting it drip a little bit. And then the last step that I'll do this is like 50-50 paint and water right now. Uh, there's a whole section of this thing that I missed last time. Classic case of like, oh, I missed a whole piece of that thing I was doing. Yoink, you need some straight up blue. There you go. As I get down to about two thirds of the way to where it starts to fade into that purple, using this half strength version of this contrast paint eventually what i do and i'm really close to turn the corner on it as soon as i get in here whoop, eventually now that makes sense all i'm doing now is this is just water and i'm just going to grab water at the sort of edge of where things are happening i'm not adding any extra pigment i'm just spreading it out a bit Some more water so there's like these big puddles here and I just dab in there steal some of what I had before fix a couple fonts that I missed last time all I'm doing is spreading the pigment out not adding anything additional and in theory 
That gets us to a decent point of a blend, being somewhat careful. At this point, I'm going to dry my brush off a bit. So the hope here is that anything that is dripping down, I'm sort of catching at this point. It's not perfect, but it shouldn't be. It's literally like a 30 foot tall dude been chilling in the warp. It was like part ghost, part zombie, part part Primarch, uh, part human. He wears a weird death cloak. It should not be obeying the laws of physics perfectly. And it's not. And that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it and that's half the reason I do Death Guard. Because it's not supposed to look normal. And I love it. Alright, so that blue is now darker, conveniently. I sincerely hope that this was Magos Purple, because that's what I'm going to try to do next. See how dark that looks up there, and then when you thin it out, it's actually that. That's why we test things. Alright. You know, I'm being semi careful as I feel wetness on my hand. I'm being wicked careful uh, to make sure that I'm not accidentally grabbing onto the part of the model that I just painted, because I do that all the time. That's extremely acceptable. For most parts of a plague marine is extremely unacceptable when you start using colorful colors. But yeah, I got that color right. That's good. Uh, do my weird craw hand. Try to stay out of the angle of the camera here. We're just repairing this area that wasn't done last time. You know what I can do safely? Do that. There we go. Don't be afraid to readjust anytime. All right, yeah, and once again, this is also a contrast paint, and so you can, you can see pretty clearly any of those spots that are really dark. That's actually a gully in the model um, that gives it texture. Um, and I don't have to fade this too much. I actually probably want the base of this to be a little darker than it is already. So I'll just give it a second coat down here. And then I'll just re-emphasize a lot of those divots that are in there. Uh, that might be a little too much. Getting a little cavalier. That's going to form a line if I don't brush it up. Yeah, I probably just want to stick with the really bizarrely shaped stuff at the ends get those darker. As soon as you start taking contrast paint to a really flat area, um, it doesn't look as good. It doesn't cover as smoothly. Uh, it looks, you start seeing brush strokes like crazy. But with anything that is like crazy rippled like this, it's dope. Um, I'm not using it on this, but like this kneecap, because it's round, Contrast paint would be awesome on that because the actual normal edge of where that roundness is, like you'd get a, a light highlight. Oh, that's a good idea. I can just zoom that guy. Um, that's reasonably faded, and I don't want to mess with it anything any more than I did. I've gotten gotten the repaint of the spot that I had missed last time, so that's good. As I create an increasingly large amount of spots that I can't touch on this model, paint myself into a corner. I think the last thing I'm going to do is a little bit of a wash. Uh, and I'll grab a slightly smaller brush. There are sections that I did in, what the heck color was it? Xandry dust? I think on camera it looks like this entire thing is the exact same tan, but it's not. Um, the knee pads and the shoulders are a darker color. Like the shins, the feet, those are all just wraith bone with seraphim sepia as a wash. Which 
means they have a little bit of texture to them. But the kneecaps and pauldrons do not. And I can only tolerate that so much. I do get antsy until the washes come out. And this will also help blend between this, what I think is Xandry dust color, and the bronze around it. It'll hopefully sort of repair any of the little white spots where it's still just primer, where I was too much of a coward to paint super close to the line. All right, it's all right. A little bit of cowardice is fine. And it's not only okay, it's intentional as I hit some of the base of these spiky bits. That's how I treat all of them. They all get a little bit of wash on the bottom. And then I just sort of fade to white at the end. And that starts to fill in some of those neat little cracks in there. And they start getting textured. See how close I can get. You can see that bone now has these little things filled in. You stay long enough, it looks like it's got really nice detail to it. And if your wash is pulling up like crazy, you just use your brush and push it around a little bit more. This is absolutely like, this is not painting. This is dabbing and wetting the whole thing. But all those little pock marks that are in there, all this wash does is get right in there, all those cracks. And this may get a slightly darker wash at some point. I do have a wash called Mortarian Grind, which I do need to use somewhere. But this initial wash is to just A, darken these areas so they get a little different than the other spots. Um, and B, to make the model more pleasing looking while I paint it so that I enjoy myself. Because until the washes come out, I generally have less optimistic feelings about I'll go over these skulls too. Same thing as the bones coming out. I, I always get a little antsy until the washes come out. And then you start seeing texture and like, oh, okay. This is why we're doing this. It takes it out of the like middle school art project and into the, yeah, good, good. It's tough to tell. Like I have, I can, I have a monitor over here, uh, but it's like me staring at this tiny model and looking over at a model or monitor and staring again. It's like, oh, that doesn't really help either. But good, I'm glad it's picking it up. And then I hit these knees. Then I've got the paint, the Xandry dust, and just splotching it in there. Basically, as soon as you get a section the slightest bit wet, it'll just, it's not osmosis, but like, it'll surface tension its way around into all these little cracks and stuff, which is really cool. It's a little heavy there, so I don't need to grab any more. I'll just pick some up there and just bloop, working around that skull. I can hit that skull with a little bit more of it, getting his little eyes. Poke his eyes. All right. Just keep peeking around a little bit. This stuff dries quicker than you think. It's still damp, but as it gets clumped up, it's often a good time to just kind of go back with a brush and just move it around again, just so it doesn't sit in there too, too thick. You don't want to absolutely fill every little corner in with too much of it. There we go. There we go. Alrighty, I think for my last, my last thing I'll do tonight is that one other coat of Plague Bearer flesh on Mortarian's face, and then I think I'm going to call it a night. I'm very pleased with how these wings turned out. Actually, I'll do the proper cut. I'll do the thing I said I was going to do, and then I'll... Then I'll outro. Have to do right in your face. Second coat. And that looks pretty heavy. And it is. 
and I'm only going to dab so much out of it. There's a weird thing that happens with this paint, actually. The proper way to do this is to just, to just touch, gentle touch, where it's pulled up. The paint cures. The paint absolutely soaks into the layers of paint beneath it, absolutely mixes with it. Um, and it's not just a matter of having a black base versus a white base. Um, you know, this green would not look the same if it hadn't had that lighter yellow around that edge. Uh, which is really crazy, because you just keep adding layer upon layer upon layer. And you can, with really thick white or black, with a couple coats, like, negate that whole thing and start from white or black again. Um, but by and large, every single, every single model I've done, without exception, looks different the next day when I pick it up. Uh, and that's, for me, the scariest part. It's like where it looks like like middle school paint projects while you're doing it. And it's really, it can be really frustrating. You can get a lot of doubts. But then the paint cures in and it dries and it finishes blending. And with washes, they finish getting into every crevice. Like, it didn't look that dark when I just got started with it. But now that it's soaking in... Makes a big difference as I put my thumb on the spot that I just hit. That was a great job. Um, it does, like, it looks significantly darker than when I started putting the wash on. And that's just with a few minutes. Um, plenty of models that I'm like, uh, I really don't like where this is going when I put them down at night in the morning. They don't necessarily look dynamite every time, but they look different and they look more coherent. So this guy... Mm hmm. I always forget which way the wings go. I'm guessing this one goes on. Let's scooch this thing out of the way here. But for now, is this how it is? Is how you're going to be, old man? No. It has to be on this side. struggle is real yeah I mean so theoretically like that's the basic whole color scheme it's purple to blue to green to red the purple and blue on the cloak stuff will be probably matched it'll probably be purple out the top of here um, but it's all a lot of light colors there's still plenty to do that's the basic scheme I wanted him to look sickly I didn't want to do the green armor that is on, you know, the wide variety of stuff that I've already done. That's that guy's super dark, but he's typhus. His darkness only so got a little nurgling on him. Like this guy's super dark. I wanted this guy to stand out for different reasons. So he gonna, but I don't know. I I still got days more work. There's still plenty of parts to attach to him that haven't been attached yet. This is. Luke Skywalker hand and on his scythe. Haven't even touched that yet. Uh, so there's still plenty to do, but I feel like this is a good point to wrap it up, let the guy dry out. Um, call it a night. So, folks, and by folks, I mean Tim, it was absolutely a pleasure having you stop in. It was great to see you. Um, or at least see your tea and your words uh, scrolling up the screen. Uh, we should catch up soon. I am hoping at some point I go up to see Will um, around the end of the month. And you and I should coordinate with him and maybe all three of us can go do something. Because that would be dope. Because it's been too long. Anyhow, it's been a pleasure. Good night. Bye-bye.